Good evening and welcome to the Southbridge School Committee meeting on August 14th, 2012. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Agenda item number two, public input. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak this evening? Thank you. Please state your name and your address, please. Make tomorrow better, starting today, with the 2012 PTA. The slogan is stemming from Pioneer Pride. Our motto is to maintain, starting ele in elementary school, a pride in our schools and a pride in our community. We hope that through this, we can increase our membership and gain more involvement. Even if it's volunteering for one simple task, anything is better than nothing. So many people in this community have so much to offer. PTA membership is not limited to parents. Anyone can join. Grandparents, aunts, uncles, business owners in the community. It costs $8 to join PTA. If $8 is too much for someone, they can still attend PTA meetings, but just not be a voting member. PTA is in the process of creating a website, which will be finished by the end of the week. The website is southbridgepta.com. We have purchased the domain name, so this website will run for five years. I just wanted to give credit to John Marinelli on Central Street, who has volunteered his time to help the PTA create this website and is doing an amazing job. 
We also have an active Facebook. And so many members, we probably have about 120 people who are on our Facebook right now, but it is open to anybody. You don't necessarily have to be our friend to be able to check out this information. And um, multiple people post on it. We also have an email for anyone to contact us. The email is southbridgepta at gmail.com. Our phone number for PTA is 508-344-8431. And each board member is taking a turn each month to answer and respond to calls on the phone. Our list of activities can be found on Facebook and all of the list of upcoming events which will also be listed on the website when the website goes live. Our first big event that I just wanted to speak about today is orientation that we're doing at Chalton Street School and West Street School on Friday, August 31st. The open house at Chalton Street School will be from 10 to 11.30 and West Street School from 1 to 2.30. All of those invitations to orientation and information can also be found on our Facebook, but will be mailed home to the students with their teaching teacher assignments next week. It will be a scavenger hunt for the children during these time slots with a lot of fun and some great prizes. Erin Quinney has organized the orientation and has put together a really great scavenger hunt for the kids. All children who are attending this event must be accompanied by an adult. Anyone wishing to volunteer for this event can email us or call us to let us know um, if they'd like to help us on, these, on this day at Charlton Street School from 10 to 11.30 or West Street School from 1 to 2.30. We will also be hosting a scholastic book fair at all, of, all three schools during open house in September. Um, East River Road, West Street, and Charlton Street, there will be a scholastic book fair at each school during the time of open house for parents to come in and purchase books. Also at this time, I wanted to thank all of the principals, Mr. Modtigny, Mrs. Shaw, Superintendent Ely, and Mr. Wiggins for all of the help that you've given me prior to the start of this year's school year and all the information as this is my first year. The secretaries at all three schools, Mrs. Lamica, Mrs. Cody, and Mrs. Morrill, have been more than helpful at answering all of my questions and helping me with um, photocopying and telling me where I can get um, all of my materials. So thank you everybody for being so welcoming. Um, we are excited to work with everybody this year, the school committee and all members of the faculty and staff in Southbridge, and we just hope to have a great year. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Jill. Thank you very much. Um, also, I sent everyone a packet of information. That is the packet that we're sending to the teachers, um, as well as a membership form, if anybody wants to join the PTA. And um, list of events, some of them are tentative because we haven't ironed out the locations and an invitation to everybody to come to orientation. That's the invitation that will be being sent, that's being sent home to all of the kids. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who'd like to come up from the public? Anyone else? Seeing none, let's call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. <coughs> Dr. D'Amico? Present. Mrs. Donovan? Present. Mr. Lazo? Present. Present. Dr. O'Leary? Present. Mrs. Principe? Present. Mrs. Woodruff? Present. Seven present. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number five, approval of minutes of this regular school committee meeting on July 24th, 2012. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you. I have a motion by Mary Ellen Principe. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Donovan. Roll call. Are all those in favor? Any, I'm sorry, any discussions or changes, please? Yes, Mr. Donovan. Thank you. Um, I just had a couple typos that I didn't know if, they are not factual uh, information, it's just typos, I didn't know. Do I do that in this form or just speak to the recording clerk after the meeting to point those out? Um, when you get the minutes, you can um, email 
when you get the minutes and you read them and you see that there's a uh, typo, but we can um, do it tonight. Would, and I, would I email the clerk to rest? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. But we can correct those tonight. If you just want to point them out, we can do that okay. tonight if All you right. like. Thank you. And if I'll just give them the Okay, thank you. Yes. All right. Um, the first item that I noticed was on page four of the minutes. Um, the very top paragraph, the last name of um, Mrs. McLaughlin is spelled with an A-U rather than an O-U. Um, the next one was on the next page, page five. Um, the, the first full paragraph when it discusses um, uh, what Mr. Lazo was speaking to that evening. Um, the second line, so he proceeded so as to house two separate schools. I believe it should be TWO rather than TO. And then finally on page seven, um, in the middle under agenda item number 13, new business. Um, I, I'm referred to as Mr. Donovan, so <laughs> we'll put an S in there. And then s just below that too, um, under agenda item number 14, Mrs. Woodruff said she named the subcommittees at the next meeting. I don't know if perhaps a word was missing there. So thank you, and for sure in the future I will email those, uh, those corrections. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none. No, we're good. All right, all those in favor? Dr. O'Leary, did you write? Yes, ma'am. Okay, did. thank you. Oh, it's seven. Thank you. Agenda item number six, reports. Are there any reports this evening? There are no reports this evening. Thank you. Item agenda number seven, introductions. Mr. Ely, I'll take, let you take that over. Okay. I just want to introduce uh, the administrative team that's here this evening. Uh, we have a number of new administrators or people who have worked in the district and changed job titles. Uh, some of them are here tonight. Uh, there are a couple that are not here tonight. They're, at, they're at actually conducting a tour of the new building, the new middle high school this evening. Uh, but I would like to introduce them and if they would just stand and, and uh, uh, so that people know who they look, what, who they are when, they, when I n announce them. Uh, first of all, Ms. Amy Allen is our new director of curriculum and instruction and assessment. Everybody knows Amy. She's worked as a middle school principal, teacher in the district, uh, grew up in town. We're happy to have Amy on board. Thank you. Uh, Tammy Peralt is the new principal of Southbridge Middle High School. She is conducting a tour this evening, is not here. She's been working in the district as a math director. Uh, Dr. Sar Jordan is here this evening. She is our new director of English language learners. Uh, Dr. Jordan was with us last year as an intern, and uh, when we went out to do the search, <coughs> quite frankly, she was by far the best candidate. She knew more about Southbridge uh, than some people who grew up here, I think, <coughs> and has made a lot of connections in town already. So. Sarah will be our director of ELL. Uh, 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 Ms. Sharon Goulet is here tonight. She's an assistant principal at Southbridge Middle High School. Sharon comes to us uh, with experience as a uh, high school teacher, coach, uh, also special ed teacher, special ed administrator, uh, and, and a principal herself. So uh, we're happy to have Sharon on board. And I believe Sharon will be covering uh, primarily grades seven, six and seven and then doing some academic uh, work within the building as well and some instructional, curriculum instruction work. Sharon, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Leach is here, not here this evening. He's also conducting a tour at the middle high school this evening. Uh, Mr. Leach has been working with us for many, many years, as you know, as a teacher and, and an assistant principal. Uh, Dana Lab, Mr. Dana Lab is here this evening. Mr. Lab uh, comes to us uh, from Tantascola. We stole him away from our neighbors. Uh, as an assistant principal to middle school and uh, several years of experience as a teacher uh, and an administ administrator before this, uh, some in Los Angeles, some in Massachusetts. Uh, we're happy to have Dana. She, he, is, uh, he is going to be the new principal at West Street School and I'm sure has made connections with uh, our PTO chair already. And uh, we'd have to have Dana on board. Dana's been with us for two days, uh, the last two days of training that we've had with our administrators. Uh, and last but not least, Mr. Doug DePonde. He's here this evening. Uh, Mr. DePonde comes to us as a, a former social studies teacher at the middle school in uh, uh, Westfield, South, I believe, middle school. Uh, and uh, this is his first administrative position as an assistant principal. He will be covering primarily grades eight and nine. Uh, his office will be on the third floor of the new middle high school. And he'll also be doing, obviously, some uh, curriculum and instruction work for us. And we're happy to have Mr. DePonde on board. Thank you very much. 
And that concludes the in introductions of the new administrators. Great, thank you very much and welcome everybody. In the future, they will all be doing presentations for you. So I think at that time, you know, uh, if you have any questions for them, you're certainly welcome to ask, but uh, they will be planning presentations in their own job areas and uh, for you in the near future once they get their feet settled a little bit. Thank you very much. Agenda item number um, eight, any presentations this evening? Uh, we do not have any presentations this evening. Thank you. Agenda item number nine, report of the superintendent. Yeah, we, ha we have a lot going on, obviously, uh, with the elementary organization and the middle high school opening. Uh, as you know, just from what we see tonight, the middle high school has started tours. Uh, each tour uh, has sort of grown. Uh, yesterday, we started tours in the morning at 9 o'clock. We had a 9 o'clock, a 1 o'clock, and a 6 o'clock, and all of them had probably over 50 participants. Today's tours were bigger than that, and I would anticipate now, tomorrow, we start with students and their parents. And I think there's three tours planned all the way through the 24th uh, of, of August. Uh, and they're being led by any number of people, the administrators. We have a number of teachers who are leading the tours. Uh, we've had a, even some, some parents in the community who have volunteered to lead some tours, and uh, I'm sure there will be others. Uh, but uh, we're trying to run a small enough groups that people can get in and hear what's being said and, and, and see the building. Uh, but it's also very, very exciting to get a lot of people into the building now where it's kind of safe to be in there and, and they can see what's going on. Uh, the elementary reorganization, uh, we are fi finalizing our bus, uh, bus routes. Uh, we had a little bit of a, a problem with first grade, but I think we're taking that care of that. Uh, should be finalizing those and get those on our website and published over the next uh, week, uh, next few days, actually. The next few days. Uh, uh, we we'll, probably won't get them out by the end of the week, but we could. We may get them out by the end of the week. Uh, we don't want to get them out too early, uh, but we'll also get the letters out, the bus <coughs> cards and things, so everybody knows where their, uh, where their bus stop is and uh, what bus number and those sorts of things. Uh, staffing uh, for elementary organization is fairly complete. We've had some people who have left the district for other positions and we're replacing teachers as we speak. So the staff lists that are in the handbooks will not be completed or finalized until that process is done. Um, it, it, this is the time of year that people are moving. Uh, so we've had a, a few people leave in the last just three or four days. Uh, and we'll replace them uh, very quickly. We posted a couple of jobs and within 24 hours had anywhere from 40 to 50 applicants for those positions. So there are people out there looking for these positions. Uh, but other than that, the elementary organization is going well. The classrooms are, uh, the furnishings have already been moved. Uh, teachers have been in their classroom setting up as we've been trying to wax the floors and get everything ready. But uh, there's still some work going on at West Street on that basement area where we had the oil leak. Uh, I was over there today, and, and I didn't go into the building, but I noticed that they was still had their machinery there, and they still had the hoses and things coming out of the basement, and uh, still doing their testing and those sorts of things. So uh, at our next meeting, we'll have uh, uh, Mr. Como come and give you an update on that, that situation and where we are exactly with replacing the floor in that basement. Uh, but the elementary, uh, uh, the students have all been placed in, in the classrooms, and and obviously the teachers are starting to get into the buildings now and, and do a lot of work. Uh, so anything else with that update? Um, Dr. Domingo, please. Yes, to you, Madam Chair, to uh, the superintendent. Uh, will the students and parents be notified by mail with um, uh, the termination where the bus stop is gonna be? A lot of them are gonna be changing, I'm assuming. There's gonna be bus stops for all the kids now that they haven't had them before. Is that gonna go home in writing? And when do you expect that to happen? Uh, we do. We will put it on our website. We'll publish it in the newspaper. And our plan would be to send it out through the schools to the parents in writing, in 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 both English and Spanish. So the schools will be mailing this before the school starts. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because we are, as you say, we are moving bus stops all over town. So yeah, yeah. that's that's certainly the plan. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Donovan. Yes. Thank you. Through you, uh, Madam Chair, to the superintendent. My question was, is there a policy on maybe redoing the paint or the crosswalks or the lines in front of these schools? I noticed that they seem quite dull, and I know I have seen the town redoing some lines. I saw them in front of the fire department, I believe, up in McMahon Field. 
where there are a lot of people going to a school that they're not familiar with. I didn't know if there was a way to make sure that there are delineations clearly where the sidewalks are, where public parking is, and I didn't know also in addition to that, the signs when school's in session that blink with the um, speed limit, do those get checked regularly to make sure that all that is all set to go before September 4th? The police department checks those signs every year, I know, but I will double check with uh, DPW on the, the, the roads, uh, on the crosswalks okay. and those sorts of things. I don't know where they are with those. That's a DPW oh, issue. Oh, it's a town thing. Okay. And the, uh, the flashing lights is also a traffic issue, and I'll, I'll uh, speak to the, the police department about that, but I think by law those are mandated to be checked every year to make sure that they're functioning okay. and on Thank the right you. time frame. Mr. Lazo. Uh, just to add to, to the, uh, my fellow committee member, um, the school signs themselves at West Street and Charles Street, not so much Eastford Road, but the Crayola crayon signs look like they've been to Beirut and back. So if we could somehow put that into the fold uh, for some sort of curb appeal, as we call it, schools. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I think uh, that was brought up at the last meeting, and, and I know we had Mike looking at that, so uh, let me just make a couple notes to myself. I want to check on those flashing signs as well. Anything else? Anyone else? Any other questions? No? I guess we can go on. Accelerated Improvement Plan update. Uh, we submitted a new plan to DESC on, the, on July 31st. Uh, it was submitted. Uh, we submitted new benchmarks at the, that time. Uh, following that, uh, uh, Ms. Allen and I and uh, our new DESE uh, plan manager, Paul Livingston, who replaced Mike Guinan, uh, met with Dr. Uh, uh, Ava Mitchell via a phone teleconference for about three and a half hours last Friday to cover any questions or any issues that she was having. She subsequently, as of yesterday morning, sent a, an update on where uh, some suggestions that her team has on some wording that they would like to see changed in our, in our new plan. Uh, and uh, that is due back to them with, with our revisions based on their suggestions by September 5th. Uh, when they meet again. Uh, but the plan, uh, the framework of the plan, the, the objectives of the plan, the fundamentals of the plan, they have accepted. It's just some of the wording on some of our early outcome benchmarks. Uh, they were questioning how there was a through line between those early outcome benchmarks and the classroom practice. And as our, we went through our conversation, it became very clear what the kind of language they were looking for. So Mr. Livingston is working on that, and, and he and I are working on that wording to get to where uh, the team will accept it. But we have, uh, again, until September 5th, our target date actually is to get it back to them by September 1st. Any discussion? Any questions? All right, let's move on to the next one, staffing updates. Uh, you know what, I think I want to, I gave you an update on the, uh, the staffing with administrators, but I don't have a staffing update on teaching right now. We have had a number of teachers, not a lot, a, a large number. We have had a sort of a, uh, we've lost two music teachers in the last two weeks. One at the elementary level, one at the high school level. Uh, so we're in the process of replacing those people. Uh, we, uh, uh, we've moved a math teacher, actually one of the administrators that's not here tonight because he doesn't even have a contract yet, uh, is our new math director, uh, who is currently a math teacher at the high school. Uh, so we don't have him on here. We'll, we'll introduce him at the next meeting once we get the contract settled and we'll announce his name and everything. But that's going to force us to replace a math teacher. We have about 60 applicants for math right now. So uh, we, we're in the process of interviewing and, and filling these positions. We have a, a, a few weeks left before school starts. But I anticipate we'll have uh, most, if not all, of these filled by the time school starts. Uh, the principals are working on these uh, you know, as we speak. Dr. Domenico. Uh, through you to, to the superintendent, can you please describe the status of the music program at the South Beach High School? There have been a number number of rumors that uh, possibly neither one of the two previously at the high school may be returning. That, uh, um, as far as I know, Dr. Garcia is planning on being here. He emailed me today uh, on another issue. Uh, I don't know uh, 
Ms. Boussier has left and taken another position. Uh, the, we had a middle school music teacher who, who left us, so we we'll have to replace that position as well. Uh, she took a job in another district. So is middle school music vocal teacher now going to be taking care of all the students? No, actually, the, uh, the, she's, the one, she's the one that left from the middle school, I believe. Will the new one replacing her be handling all the uh, vocal programs? We haven't made school? any firm decisions on that yet. We're looking at our staffing and, and the number of students in our master schedule to make the decisions about where that goes. But we are in the process of, of, of looking at that and interviewing for those positions. If I remember correctly, I thought that we did reduce uh, a music position at the high school as of the latest update that I remember saying? We did not. Right now, we were staffed at four. The problem is we need some staffing in other areas, so the question is if we have two vacancies, do we fill them both, or do we fill one with music and one with another area that we have a need? Because uh, okay. we had a request for a science teacher, we have a request for a social studies teacher uh, to, to take care of some classroom needs, so we're, we're looking at the balance of that right now. The reason I'm asking is that there's a number of parents that are concerned because vocal program at the high school has been traditionally very, very, very strong. Very strong. Not, not only is the program strong, but engages well over 100 students. So this is not a, a trivial issue. It's a very, and very strong. I would uh, like to have an, an assurance that that will be taken care of. We absolutely will take care of it. Okay, uh, we, we have to. Uh, as you said, it's a very strong program. We have a beautiful new facility. I think it's a facility that draws people in to fine arts, and, and certainly we're uh, interested in finding the best teacher possible. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, seeing none, we'll go on to item, uh, agenda item number 10, report of the business manager. Uh, no report this evening. Thank you. Uh, moving on to ag uh, agenda item number 11, school committee actions. Um, we need to make an amendment and move the um, school committee report assignment under the school committee actions. We need to vote on the, the subcommittees. So do I have an amendment? I'll make Mrs. that Prince amendment to move item. 14, mm -hmm. school committee report assignment to item 11, school committee actions. All right, we have a motion for an amendment. Is there a second, second. to the amendment? Thank you, a second to the amendment. So we have amendment to move item number 14, school committee report assignment to the school committee actions. Do we have any discussion on that? No discussion, can we have a roll call please? Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenko? Yes. Seven yes. Motion passes. So now our, our agenda is to vote the new subcommittee. So I will announce those now. I will go one at a time. So our first one is the curriculum subcommittee. I have uh, Mrs. Donovan as the chair, Dr. O'Leary as the second member, and myself as the alternate. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion by Mrs. Principe. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. McLaughlin. Any discussion? Yes, Dr. D'Amico. I, I thought these were appointments being made by the chair of the school committee. I don't think these are items we need to vote on. As far as uh, I can answer that, um, Go ahead. it's in our policy, the policy we vote upon, BDE. The subcommittee will be, subcommittee chair and members will be appointed by the committee chair subject to approval by the committee. We vote them every year. Oh, we do? Yeah. Okay. I don't remember what it was. Any other discussion? Can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. D'Amico? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Seven, yes. Thank you, motion passes. Item B, policy subcommittee. Chair, Pat Woodruff. Lauren McLaughlin as the second, and al the alternate is Dr. O'Leary. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. And we have a motion by Mrs. Donovan, seconded by Mrs. Principe. Do we have any discussion? 
Okay, no discussion. So can we have a roll call vote, please, Mayor? Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenico? No. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Six yes, one no. Motion passes, thank you. For C, we have budget, facilities, and transportation. Chair, Dr. Domenico. Mary Ellen Principe as the second, and our alternate as Mr. Scott Lazo. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, a motion second. by Dr. Domenico. Thank you, seconded by Mrs. McLaughlin. Any discussion? Mrs. Donovan. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, do we need to include the word budget as in the title of the subcommittee? It just, the way it's written here says facilities and transportation, but you mentioned budget, and I think budget has always been part of that. I didn't know we should add how to add that in so we make sure that we vote in the right subcommittee with the right people. Right, the Thank budget's you. always been in there, so it's usually budget, facilities, and transportation. Okay. So in light of that, I'd like to make an amendment um, number, uh, is that 14? We, no, said budget. I said budget, so we don't have to. Well, it's not on the minutes, though. I think it's not on the actual oh. agenda. This is a, this is a motion. Uh, so, Mr. Lazo? Mrs. Donovan is correct. It has to be amended. Whatever we're thinking is one thing. Whatever's on this agenda is going to be the okay. law. <laughs> so I think she's correct in making an amendment adding budget. All right. So we have an amendment on the table to change the title to budget facilities and transportation. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you. I have a second. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenico? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Seven yes to amend. Thank you. So now we'll go back to the motion for the budget, facilities, and transportation. Again, Chair Dr. Domenico with Mary Ellen Principe and alternate as Scott Lazo. Do I have any other discussion? No discussion. Roll call, please. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenico? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Seven, yeah. Thank you. Motion passes. The next would be the collective bargaining subcommittee. Chair Mary Ellen Principe with Scott Lazo, and on the alternate would be Lauren McLaughlin. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion from Mrs. Principe and a second. Uh, would that be? Dr. Yep. Domenico, thank you. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenico? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Seven, yes. Yeah. Thank you, motion passes. And for the last subcommittee, we have the community and family and Community Engagement Subcommittee. Chair Lauren McLaughlin. Yep. Mrs. Principe. I, I think again, um, the words communication and family community, not community and community. All right, so we're gonna change that to communication and family and communication engagement. No, ma'am. Communication. One community and one communication, right? Communication, family, and community. And family. Family. Communication, and family, and community. And community. Yes. Yes. First word is communication, right? Yes. yes. Communication, yep. and family, and community. So do we need an amendment to change that also? All right, so I have a motion for an amendment. Am I making the motion? Oh, I'll make the motion to amend it. Okay. To read communication and family and community engagement subcommittee. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call. Dr. Domenico? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Seven, yes. Thank you. Okay, so now our last subcommittee is the Communication and Family and Community Engagement Subcommittee, Chair Lauren McLaughlin with Kara Donovan and alternate Tanya Domenico. Do I have a motion? 
So moved. Thank you. And a second? Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? No discussion. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenko? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. Okay, our next agenda is uh, agenda number 12, which is unfinished business. Um, the last meeting, we had some issues with the handbooks. Um, so everyone received all the corrections that were made in the handbook. So tonight we're going to vote the handbooks. Um, we'll need a motion to vote. Do we, can we do this all in one lump? I think you can if you want to. All right. I'd like to do this in all, do A, B, C, and D all together, if that's okay with everyone this evening, as one large vote. Okay. All right, so we're going to vote the approval of the 2012-2013 Southbridge Middle High School Handbook, the West Street School Handbook, the Charlton Street School Handbook, and the Eastford Road School Handbook. Do I have a motion? As revised. As revised. As revised. So moved. Thank you. I have a motion second. and a second. Any discussion? Dr. Domenico. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm really surprised that, that you know, the changes that we have spent uh, a, a good deal of debate last time are included on, on a page and a half, maybe two pages. Uh, I really expected to see those changes implemented in handbooks themselves. I understand it's an effort to have them put into the book and assembled, but at least a single copy of each revised handbook should have been appropriate. Um, more, more importantly, uh, I think because of all the administrative changes, would it not be better to for all the handbooks really, instead of listing staff whose identity will be obsolete within a few weeks into the school year, to provide those in a printable form, PDF form online as the school is starting or something like that. Because we're gonna keep changing this and it's really, it's, it's not informative to the parents giving them information that is not accurate. And I just don't know how do we deal with all five buildings. Uh, you know, it's a printed document. It's a printed document with, that's gonna go out before the school starts and then staff is not gonna be the same when parents call, students enter the school. I just don't know how to, how to deal with it. Well, I, 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 let me respond to that. I, first of all, this is what we do every year. Uh, we have staff that changes this time of year every year. So that's always an issue. But one thing that we always do is once we print these handbooks and we get them translated, we also do scan them and put them on the website of each school. So the handbook is in each school and it's in both languages for each school. So uh, I, I would say you're right, we, we should do that. The reason we didn't present you with books tonight is because we, weren't, we were asked not to. We actually had planned on doing that and, and, and uh, the request was just made to, to send the re revisions out as they are, not the, the entire book back out. Who made that request? The school committee? The chair. Oh, well, may, maybe on her own behalf, not definitely on behalf of the entire school committee, but that's, the, that's besides the point. Uh, I, I think it's a critical year, uh, and with all the changes happening, and this is gonna be the year when we can provide parents with an accurate handbook. Everything's been recognized, what? teachers have been moved, two schools have been united. I, I don't know. It's and I know it's not an easy issue. I just wish we could find a strategy to, to assure the parents that they will have accurate information to the administration of the building, that they will know who the teachers in the building are. Uh, whether we do that uh, via update uh, by the, or note, put something in the handbook saying that updates will be coming, they will be timely as soon as anything happens and it's, it's finalized, it will be, I posted mail to home, I, I don't know. Well, I, I, mean, I, I, I don't yeah. think that this would be unreasonable for parents to expect because no, I, we, I we're agree. reformatting the whole district. I, I, I would agree, we, okay. we, uh, we absolutely will have accurate handbooks with the exception of probably a few names. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's our intent always. And as we do get changes which do occur, uh, we will make updates in our, on our website, obviously, when staff does change. But everything else, uh, the handbooks are very accurate. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Just 
Mr. Lau. Quick second. Um, I think Tanya has covered a lot of what I was going to say. I think I'm more concerned about next year, the process. I know the, um, I think it was Ms. Donovan that came up with some questions about formatting and formulating what's in the handbook. And I think that uh, a policy manual coincides. So I think if, if we could just, you know, next year maybe a little earlier and a little more input, we could not, it wouldn't be such a rat race in the fourth quarter. Yeah, no, so. I, I agree. We, we uh, had requested these handbooks from our administrators uh, much earlier than we, we received them. Uh, I will say that. Uh, we have subsequently, as we've made these revisions, decided as an administrative team that, that each building is going to need to form a, a group of teachers and maybe parents and even students to some level and, and talk about how these things should be formatted in the future. So we have a, a standing group working on these things throughout the year. And, and that's, uh, that's a point well taken and that's something that all the principals have committed to doing in the future to, to kind of avoid this problem. Anyone else? Seeing none, let's have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenico? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Seven yes. Motion passes, thank you. Agenda item number 13, new business. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Mrs. No, Donovan. that's okay. Um, I just had a, another item under unfinished business that I I oh, wanted to bring up, it's not on the agenda, but it's just something that I had been thinking about. And I think it goes under unfinished business. If it does not, please, okay. please let me know. Um, I have been giving a lot of thought to the meeting that we had on July 24th relative to um, search committees, hiring policies, posting of jobs, things like that. And I know at the last meeting we were able to um, vote on a new reconfiguration of the, uh, the middle high school of how the administrative structure will look at that school. So through you to the superintendent, I didn't know if you could perhaps enlighten the committee as well as perhaps the public on what process you use to fulfill not only positions at that school, but the positions of the people that were um, presented to us this evening. I think uh, typically, given time, uh, what we do is post a position any position that we have, uh, ex it was internally and externally uh, for a number of weeks, uh, usually anywhere from three to four weeks minimum of posting time. Uh, the, uh, the process then would be to form, we, we do a, a process now in, in our human resources department where we actually create the profile of an ideal candidate and we, uh, we have a job description that's either brand new or updated, we do that as we do as part of this process. Then we do a screening and we, we do interviews in round one and then an interview possibly at round two and possibly even round three depending on the level of position. Uh, again, given time we do that. Not given time, uh, with the importance of, of uh, getting things off to a, a, a start with, uh, with people in positions of importance, uh, we have streamlined that process significantly in a number of cases. Uh, we have gone back to people who interviewed for other positions or interviewed for a similar position but didn't get it, re uh, but was my second candidate uh, in some cases. Uh, we have uh, used a, 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 an internal procedure where administratively we discuss who the best candidate is and we sometimes make a decision that way. And in other situations, uh, I make the decision myself. And ultimately, all the administrators work for me and all the teachers work for the principals. Uh, so the principals go through a different process in their buildings. Uh, but we do have a process in place here that we would take. But time being what it is in some cases, uh, we have altered that process. Uh, as is the, the prerogative of the superintendent uh, in hiring certain positions. So uh, I, I firmly believe that it's, it's, uh, we're always better off to have people go through a process, a thorough process of, of vetting and those kind of things. And we've done that in various ways. No candidate gets hired here without going through a vetting process. Uh, depending on what that process is, 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 is time uh, constraints make that different. 
Um, in response to that, I, I just wanted to say that um, on, a personal, on a personal note, when I ran for this committee you know, during my election, part of my, my big thing was my ABCs, accountability, best practices, and communication. And I think in the way that some of these positions were filled were not necessarily the best practice. And I felt bad about that. Um, I also realized that it is the ultimate role of the superintendent to hire uh, building principals, that we play no role in the actual selection process. I do understand our role is solely to employ the superintendent and perhaps the special ed director. Again, but just getting back to the best practices, I feel that in some of those cases, the best practice was not done. However, there's nothing we can do about it. He has the ultimate authority to hire the way he hired. However, I would recommend now that the um, subcommittees have been established, and I would really hope that the main thing that the policy subcommittee would look at is a hiring and a posting policy for the district. Ultimately, yes, the superintendent can choose who he wants, but I think as us as a school committee, as a governing board, it's our role to put how that process gets put into place to assure that the best practice is being used, that everybody is being held accountable for their specific roles, communication is taking place. So again, we, I, we control the how, and I would hope that it's something that the policy committee would look at to try to set guidelines, guardrails, so that in the future there is no question of how a certain job was filled. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Lazo. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's not news to, to anybody on how I feel about the process. And I do agree 100% with uh, Mrs. Donovan as far as process and procedure, especially on the accountability portion. Um, I know the process. I know ed reform. I know what the superintendent's duties are, and I know what the school committee's duties are. Um, I would just like to ask, what type of search did we perform for the high school principal? Was it an international search? Was it a local search? What, what, what type of search do we use? Is that a question for me? Uh, to the chair. To you, Mr. <coughs> First of all, we, don't, we no longer have a high school principal position. We have a middle, school, high, middle high school principal position as was created by the school committee when we created the, uh, the new configuration of the, of the administrators. And uh, leading up to that, Basically, I did an internal search uh, with some people in my administration as part of that discussion. Uh, but ultimately, I made that decision myself after looking at our internal candidates and who I thought fit best in the positions that we had. I know that we do not appoint principals, but as a school committee member, when I took Mr. Lab's process and Mr. Lab's job app, his qualifications, and then I took our middle high school qualifications, they were miles apart. And he is the principal of West Street. Um, I think it's, as a school committee member, poor judgment. I think it's a mismanagement, and I think that uh, I, I'm not going to change on that. But the thing is, the process, to, to the process, we've always had a process. We've, under uh, Dale Hanley, we've had processes the school committee has put forward that we would have a search committee where we would have a school committee member, parent, administrator, kind of a cross-section. We know the superintendent has the ultimate uh, say on the position, but the process was always very firm and fair. And, and, and whether anybody liked whoever got appointed, you know, the majority usually went with uh, the appointment, and the appointments were pretty, pretty good. We haven't done real bad with that process. That's why I think a lot of the parents and, and uh, people in town are kind of cautiously uh, going into this, this project here now because they were told certain things ahead of time that are not going to happen now. Uh, that was why I didn't understand what the great rush was to go to one administrator. It's, it's not that, uh, you know, it is what it is. But I think what we have to do is the process has been flawed. I think it's a mismanagement uh, appointing uh, who has been appointed. I'm not going to do appointing, but I will hold the superintendent accountable under new business. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Principe. What I would like to say now is that there are administrators in place, and it behooves this school committee to support the administrators that were put in these positions. 
and to support our superintendent for choosing these individuals. There is a process, and it's called accountability. And that comes further down the line. But right now, I don't believe it's the time to start out with, a, with negativity, with a brand new middle, middle high school and a reconfiguration of the elementary schools to go into this with a negative attitude. And that is what I'm hearing. And I will say it again, it is time to support these individuals that were put into these positions. Thank you. Dr. O'Leary. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. My comment would be uh, in response to Ms. Principe. Uh, my loyalty to, is, is to this district, not the administrators of this uh, district, is to the, the, the district and the students. Uh, so if I have an issue with someone who's been appointed in a flawed, potentially flawed fashion, you will not find me supporting something that is, uh, that is, uh, goes against what is right for this district. Thank you. Okay. Mrs. McLaughlin, did you have something? Um, not related to this. Okay. Uh, I, though I do want to say that um, I, I, I agree with Ms. Principe. Um, I think the success of the administrative team that's been put in place at that school will be a success for all of us, it will be a success for the students. Um, and I would like us to uh, support that administration going forward. Thank you. Mr. Lazo, did you have anything else? Um, it's nice that we can all get together and hold hands and sing Kumbaya, but I have a problem with the appointment. I do not think she's qualified. I, uh, as far as worrying about the kids and staff, I'm very worried about the kids and staff uh, on the organization and management portion of the school. Uh, I will continue to keep a close watch eye on it. I think we have to move forward. Of course, the district's going to move forward. The district was here long before the school committee and superintendent. So I think we're going to move forward. But uh, don't put your head in the sand and say, let's just go forward and forget about everything now. I'm one that remembers everything. Your greatest teacher is your history and your mistakes. Don't forget it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lazo. Mrs. Quinney? Um, I Point of order. The public is allowed to speak at any time during our meetings. There is a statement with that in there. So she can speak at this time. Mrs. Quinney, just announce your point name. Point of order, Madam Chair. Erin Quinney? Wait, Wait excuse me, Street? Mrs. Quinney. What is the point of order, sir? Point, excuse me? What is the point of order, Mr. That's Martin? what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to say, state your point of order. Madam Chairman, for the last 25 years, we've moved in and out of citizens' input. We are a policy-making body. We are meeting in public, not a public meeting. We already researched this with the attorney. That's why we moved citizens' forum, or citizens' input, they call it, public input, before we start our policy meeting. And that is state law. And this was told to us by our own attorneys. So if you, as the chairman, want to is this a ventriloquist show? The lips moving, the dummy speaks? Excuse me, Mr. Lazo, please. You're going to do your whatever you want you. anyway, so continue to do whatever you want. You want to violate the launch of your business. I just wanted to enlighten you on it. Thank I, you. I Thank you. I know Robert's that. rules allows. Mrs. Quinney. Thank you. Um, I also would like to state that history is our great teacher, so let us look back. We have a policy manual in place for the school committee that was. The last adoption was in May of 2009, at which point there was no hiring policy in place for the superintendent to follow. Fast forward to 2010 when there was a search committee established by the school committee for the superintendent's position, which was then disbanded at the discretion of the school committee, who then performed their own search and found and appointed Mr. Ely as the candidate who sits before us now as our superintendent. At that time, when he was the man for the job, there was no policy manual in place to guide his hiring practices. There was no issue with it up until recently. If he, you felt comfortable with his ability to choose and hire administrators within the district at that time, now we move forward to today. He has done the job that you've hired him to do. He has put in place an administrative team to lead a middle high school. I myself am not thrilled that there wasn't a process. However, as a member of this community, 
I wish and hope for nothing but success for Ms. Carroll and her team. And to sit here and to listen to and to read in the newspaper members of the school committee demeaning and undermining her authority as a leader in this district is absolutely and positively repugnant to me. In the vision statement for the Southbridge Public Schools, it says that we are developing personal integrity. It would be really nice to see the members of the school committee hold themselves to a standard of personal integrity that we expect the students of this community to follow, not to display themselves in a manner in which we say, this is what not to do, this is how not to behave. This is a woman who has been placed in a position of authority with strong people around her. You cannot like it, you cannot like the process, but her success is the success of this district, the success of the kids in that school, and the success of our community. If you wish nothing but to watch her do something wrong and to fail, you are hoping for the failure of this district and those students, and to me, I, I can't even fathom that thought. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Quinney. Mr. Lazo. Yeah, that's funny. That statement didn't uh, suit when Bill Bishop was the principal. That's uh, almost double standard. But uh, what Miss Quinney's got to learn is that there is no policy for the superintendent because the superintendent is under the jurisdiction of Ed Reform. We have nothing to do with appointments. Mm -hmm. I think that Ms. Donovan has, and Ms. McLaughlin has brought it up numerous times, and Ms. Quinney hasn't got it yet. I think you have to tell her a few more times that we have no say in appointments. Now, if the superintendent wants to appoint somebody that's been an administrator for three to five months in the Southwood school system, and you're all happy about that, as a citizen, I'm very happy for you. But as a school committee member, I don't want my kids, and when I say kids, I don't mean mine personally, I mean the district. I, mean, I have no, not me, me. So I think what we really have to do is, I'm very worried about making our kids and our staff guinea pigs in a trial and error of one administrator. So I disagree. That's not a violation of the Ethics Commission. I, I, I answer to the State Ethics Commission. I've already talked. Miss Quinney's a little out of touch with what she's saying. She gets up and she talks, but she's out of Thank touch. You. She doesn't understand the law, nor does she ever understand what we're supposed to be doing up here. We do have a right to disagree. We don't have to hate each other. Mm -hmm. We do the politics. You vote, you vote. If you have four votes, you win. Very simple. Thank you. Thank She'll you. get it someday. Thank you, Mr. Lazo. Mr. Ely. Well, I avoid reading newspapers, no offense, Gus, but I have read a couple of things. Uh, and I've, I've read a number of things that have been sent to me. And, uh, uh, you know, I, as, as a friend of mine says, it, it's hard to hurt my feelings. I don't have any left. Uh, and I am held responsible for the learning of every child in this district. I'm also held responsible for the success of every administrator in this district. Part of my job is to develop people. Uh, we spent the last two days and we spent the next, we spend the next two days working with our administrators to give them uh, some knowledge and some skills and some training that, that uh, they haven't had yet, uh, things that are new. Uh, we do it every year. Uh, I, on a, on a uh, regular basis, meet with all administrators uh, and we, and we, uh, and some take to it better than others. I, I will admit that. Uh, some take to it better than others. Uh, but my job is to develop people and develop administrators. Uh, I would never put anybody in charge of students in a classroom, on a bus, uh, in a building, or in a district that I wouldn't put my own kids or my own grandkids uh, under their responsibility. I have 100% faith in, the, in Mrs. Peralt, Ms. Peralt and her team uh, and I do believe it's a team, it takes a team effort to run a building that size. Uh, you know, whether people all agree or disagree, uh, I don't, only time will tell. Uh, I don't believe it's an experiment. I believe it's uh, faith in, in somebody's ability that I've seen and, that I've, and I, that I've assessed and that I've studied. And uh, I think it was very important to put a team around any new principal. Just the way I'm putting a team around Mr. Lab at West Street, uh, just a different kind of team. Uh, but this is about people. This is a people business. And when, when you put somebody in charge of something, uh, I'm not going to go second guessing what they do. If I have a problem with Mrs. Peralt, I'm going to go talk to Ms. Peralt. 
I'm not going to talk in the newspaper, guys, sorry. I'm not going to talk to Mr. Abramson, even though I like Mr. Abramson. I'm not going to talk to him on his blog. It's not what it's about. It's about me working with Ms. Peralt in her building to make things go right for those kids and for your kids, for our kids. Uh, they, uh, uh, they deserve the best, and, and I believe that's what we put in front of them. And I think that uh, uh, I think we'd be really careful about wondering whether it's going to succeed. It's absolutely going to succeed because I haven't given it any other option. It has to succeed. Uh, and I got to be honest with you, everybody that I've sent up there to take a tour of that building so far, and everybody that's come back to me after they've taken a tour of that building and had an opportunity to work in, with that team and see them work together and operate already has come back very, very impressed. I would encourage the public to take advantage of the tours that are ongoing over the next few days to see the excitement in the teachers' faces. You talk about the teachers, the teachers are overly excited about that building. The kids who are coming into the building, the parents who are coming into the building, every teacher in that building that I've talked to is excited. Some of the teachers yesterday, we had a large number of people come in to do the tours, teachers volunteering to take people on tours teachers who have been in the building and are going to be leaders in the building. Uh, it's a time to develop a new culture in Southbridge, and it's a culture of success and expectations for all students and all adults, including ourselves. I hold my, myself to high standards, and I know you hold me to high standards, and I appreciate that, Mr. Lazo, and, and everybody setting up here. I do, and I hold you to high standards as well, uh, because we are all here for the 2,204 kids at the last count that we have in our, under our care. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that it's successful for those kids. Uh, the drama, you know, it, it'll, it'll come and go uh, with both the kids and the adults. Uh, but the one thing that's consistent is it has to be the expectations for excellence that we have for everybody in our system, from the kids up through the adults. Thank you. Thank you. Any other unfinished business before we go on to new business? Madam Chairman? Yes, just Mr. Lazo. Let's not make it sound like all of a sudden we just started with excellence yesterday. Excellence has been on the move for the last seven years through a lot of different people, a lot of optimism. There still is a lot of optimism. Don't, don't misunderstand when we disagree that we're against everything. There's no bigger cheerleader for that building in South Bridge than myself. Okay. There are a few people that got involved lately, and, and, and it's fine. I mean, it's time for changes sometimes, and sometimes it's not, and, and the people control that end of it. I understand government, politics, and management. I'm very disheartened and rushed to arms to do this 30 days before we open school. And the only thing I'm saying is, is that from here on out, I mean, I've, I've got many problems in the district that we work on, and I, I'm optimistic that it will always survive and it'll be fine. But the thing is, when I, when I disagree and I think something's being mismanaged, I go the whole route because that's the way I am. Don't have to like it. You can pull me out in June, whatever you want to do. I'm sure Ms. Pretty will enjoy that, but that's what I'm thank saying. You. Thank you, you Mr. Lazo. Anyone else for unfinished business? Mrs. Donovan. Thank you. I just have one last comment, and I feel I'm the one that got this snowball rolling, but um, I just want everybody to know Mr. Ely, everybody sitting up here, people out in the public, there's nothing more that I want than the success of that new school, success of the children, success of all those new administrators, success of this board, and success for Mr. Ely. The last thing I wanted to do was pronounce something as, neg as a negative um, thing. I care so deeply. That's why I'm here. That's why we're all here. I fully support Mr. Ely's decision. I fully support Ms. Perot. I fully support all those administrators that were there today. They deserve that, and that's the least that we can do, and I stand behind every single one of them. This is a huge deal for our town. We've been waiting for so long to express and enjoy the excitement and the positivity that this new facility will bring to our town and to our kids. So my only issue was Perhaps Mr. Han Ms. Dr. Hanley had a way of hiring in the past. There is nothing in our school committee policy manual that sets a course for hiring school principals. That is my point, to avoid any innuendo or rumor or whatever the case may be in future years to come, if there's a policy in place 
for a superintendent to follow the how to go about finding a principal. That was my main point. But I am so excited, thrilled to pieces about what's about to happen in our town. And if I gave the wrong impression, I wholeheartedly apologize because you're not going to find a bigger cheerleader than me. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for unfinished business? Dr. Domenico. Uh, ma Madam Chair, I, I would just like to add to the process discussion one last thought maybe. As a public department funded by public money, we are obligated to follow re rules and regulations that are in place for posting any available open jobs. This is not a private company. This is not at the discretion of the CEO. It is not. And uh, if we have violated any of the regulations, people who in the district, out of the district, might have been qualified, were qualified, were expecting something to happen, will have an opportunity to contest how this has mm -hmm. gone through. This is not a private company. Just, just uh, we may encounter something in the future because of the way we conduct this. Public posting is a must for any opening. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for unfinished business? Seeing none, we'll go on to item number 13, new business. And the only new business I have this evening is our next meeting scheduled for September 11th, 2012 at 7 p.m. Is there anyone? I think you're gonna need one on the 28th. We have some business issues we have to take care of on the 28th. Two weeks from tonight. All right. Do we have to make an amendment and vote that? Well, you don't have one okay. on here. Okay. So Mr. Lazo, did you have new business? I'm done with that subject. It's not on that subject. It's something else. Okay. Hold on. Um, Doctor, excuse me. Just a little nervous. Mr. Ely has asked that we have a meeting on August 28th. Is everyone available to have a meeting on August 28th? Okay, that is. The date is it's two Tuesday. weeks from tonight. Two weeks from tonight. It's a Tuesday, August 28th. I think we have some business -ish items that need to be taken care of before the end of the month. I, I don't have a lot from my standpoint, but I know that Mr. Wigan couldn't get some things on the agenda for tonight that, uh, that will need to be on in two weeks. Yep. And it's, it's also. So two days before school opens. So. It needs to be pretty quick. Yep. Okay. All right, then, Dr. Domenico. Is this a special school committee meeting, a single item? Is this a committee of the whole? Or are we completely dismantling the meeting schedule we have agreed upon at the beginning of we, this term? We will make this a committee meeting of the whole. Okay. Um, I, I, I think um, when it comes to the finances, I think we all know that sometimes we have a, a short run to the start of the year and purchases and things have to be signed. I know that uh, Mr. Wiggins and I have talked about many things with the new school and some of the things that are in the other school, so I, I will be attending that meeting if uh, Thank I you. have no problem on the meeting on the 28th. Thank you. So we will then have a committee meeting of the whole meeting on August 28th, 7 p.m. Single agenda item or full? Excuse me? Is it a single agenda item or is it the That's full fine. agenda? It's a, it's is it the only thing? Single agenda item. It's, it's, it's just a business office. It's just a business. It'll, it'll be, be a business meeting. It might be multiple business items, but business But mostly items, bu business. Yeah. Any other new business this evening? Mr. Lott. Madam Chairman, um, I know this discussion is taking place, and I do agree that, you know, uh, the superintendent is the appointing authority and we can't have a policy and stuff like that. There's usually a mutual agreement on, you know, so, uh, search committees and stuff. I'm, I'm uh, disheartened to say that I was a man that supported Mr. Ely in the beginning, that I'm, I'm very disheartened in the last six months in a performance. So I'd just like to make a motion to remove Eric Ely as superintendent. Second. There's a motion out there to move Mr. Eric, Eric Ely as the superintendent and a second. Is there any other discussion on this motion? Mr. Lazo. I would just like to uh, explain there's been much discussion on his decision although he casts it that the school committee made the was recommended for a single administrator um, and then appointing an administrator that has a temporary license which I was kind of taken back by it um, one that can work for a year it's under law um, with temporary license 
if the superintendent approves it. So it was his, his job to do that. And at the same time, you're supposed to hire a mentor to work with her all year, which I heard was going to be Dan Driscoll, the former superintendent of Tantasqua. Uh, I have questions uh, about a lot of things that have happened. I've been lied to on many occasions from the beginning of the search to date. Um, there's been things that went on that I will not even mention in, in front of public, but I think that the mismanagement of the district is my main reason for the removal, and I thank you very much. Thank you. Any other discussion? Dr. O'Leary. Uh, my only comment is I want to point out that before five members of this city committee, Mr. Ely intentionally misrepresented the position of the state in reference to one versus two principles. If you fail to recognize that, shame on you. And for a person to, for whatever reason, to intentionally misinform me tells me I can no longer Dr. have Olay. any credibility. Dr. That Olay. person has no credibility in my mind. Dr. And Olay, I don't please. know how we can go forward with that. Are we going with to that. go on with the vote, please? Uh, no, I thought, I, I thought I had an opportunity attacking, here at the option. I believe that you're attacking the, uh, Mr. Ely at this point. I'm taking it as an attack, and I would like that to stop. Please. It's not an attack. It's a fact, ma'am, but I'll stop. Mrs. Thank Woodruff? you. Yes, Mrs. Mrs. Um, I was at, I was present at a parent meeting uh, with Dr. Bonda that was held here, um, and Dr. Bonda herself stated that the state had provided inconsistent information on that issue. Um, she said that to the, uh, the parents at that meeting when we had asked about it. So she said, in fact, they had said yes, they had said no, they had said yes, they had said no. So if one particular point in time that was the information that was given and acted upon, then I don't think that was an intentional misrepresentation, in my opinion. I will not be supporting this agenda item. I think it's ludicrous beyond all measure. Um, I think we need to give our superintendent the authority and the power to do his job. I think uh, the voters are ready for that. I think they were extremely clear in June about the direction they wanted to see this district go in. And um, I fully support Mr. Ely and his team. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on the discussion? Mr. Lazo. Um, some of the, uh, I, I really do agree that the voters have spoken, but I think the previous speaker has to realize when statements are made that Bartlett went to two, and then when you call them, they're dying to go back to two administrators. I think what, what has had been happening is there's been a feeding frenzy of information to certain people. I think what we have to keep in the forefront is this summer has been a roller coaster ride of deceit. And I think what has to happen is it's, it's, it's a mismanagement of the district. When you take a, a candidate and you appoint them with three months experience in your district, and then you take somebody else like Mr. Lab with a, a lot of experience and you put them in an elementary school, I'm not telling them what to do. But you know, it's common sense that when you look at how everything went down in the time frame, when you are going into your school year and you're walking in 30 days before and all of a sudden you re recommend a total overhaul of a management going in with 30 days left. I'm getting phone calls from teachers, parents that are in a panic, and I told them, I said, you have to wait and see. And I try to keep a positive turn on it. But as a school committee member, I, I've lost a lot of faith in my good friend from Ohio and I think that, you know, we started out, I thought we're heading in the right direction. And I see that we're not heading in the right direction. And if I would have known this uh, back then, and the dealings that I've had have not, and I don't want to get into those. Those are between Mr. Ely and I. He knows what I'm talking about. And that's good enough for me. I think that it's grounds for removal. Thank you. Any other discussion before we make the votes, please? Roll call vote on the motion by Mr. Lazo and seconded by Ms. Dr. O'Leary to remove Mr. Ely from his position. Roll call, please. Mrs. McLaughlin? No, 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 Dr. no, no. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Mrs. You are so okay. immature. All right, all right, hold on, you guys. I started it, I apologize. Please, oh. let's vote appropriately. Roll call vote, let's start from the beginning and do it like adults. Mrs. McLaughlin? No. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? No. Mrs. Woodruff? No. Dr. Domenico? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? No. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Three yes, four no. Motion does not pass. Are there any, is there any other new business I before new business. Mrs. McLaughlin? Um, 
something I really struggled with whether I was going to bring up tonight, but um, I definitely think I need to. Uh, I would publicly like to respond to statements Mr. Lazo made as uh, given to reporter Brian Lee in the Telegram on August 3rd. Um, those statements concern the extension of Mr. Ely's contract one month prior. And I believe those statements were irresponsibly made and completely unsubstantiated by fact. I want to emphatically state that I was not part of any secret deal to extend Mr. Ely's contract. And this is in reference to a comment that was made. I don't even want to dignify the comment, let's put it that way. How I just want the public to know, because in fact, when we came back and did vote to extend, we did not really discuss it. So I would like the public to know that I voted to extend Mr. Ely's contract to provide stability to our district in a time of unprecedented change. What did factor into my decision was not any guarantee to vote a certain way, um, but the information that in the two years since Mr. Ely was hired, he was never given any goals or objectives, any measurable distinct goals or objectives by the previously configured school committee, nor was he ever properly evaluated as required. You, Mr. Lazo, did not attend that meeting on July 3rd when the vote was taken, and you have no first-hand knowledge of what my motives were. Um, your statement to the newspaper attacking our vice chair implied that my vote to retain Mr. Ely was based on a wink and a nod with the other school committee members and not the true circumstances. Adding the phrase, as I heard it, uh, to your statement was an attempt, and a very poor one, to insulate you from potential legal consequences of making a false statement. The rumor is hurtful to me personally, uh, as a new school committee member, the Southbridge School Committee as a whole, and the entire public school district. Your comments go beyond agreeing to disagree uh, and are contrary to your own words welcoming to this committee, uh, welcoming me to this committee on July 24th. The As I Heard It game is a dangerous one that all of us should reject lest we open the floodgates to a litany of damaging rumor, innuendo, and gossip, none of which has its place on a public board that should be operating at all times in a professional manner and in the best interests of the citizens we were elected to represent. Whether you stated or perpetuated this complete falsehood, I believe I am owed a public apology because if I was not part of this deal, there was no deal. And I am requesting that apology tonight. Um, I also believe uh, that Mr. Ely, Mrs. Woodruff, Mrs. Principe, and Mrs. Donovan are owed the same public apology, though I have discussed this with none of them, and I do not make that on their behalf. Thank you. Mr. Lazo. Uh, I would just like to comment that I didn't mention Mrs. Donovan. I don't remember ever saying Mrs. Donovan or Mrs. Uh, school committee members. I, I thought I mentioned one person. Uh, I still believe that's a fact. It wasn't made up. And I stick to it. And uh, as far as apologizing for, for, for knowing and believing, uh, I don't think that's coming in the near future, and it doesn't look good for tomorrow either. Thank you, Mr. Lazo. Um, Mr. Ely? Just a brief statement. Uh, it's an emotional time for our district. We have a lot of turmoil going on. We have, we have a, lot, uh, a lot going on with new one through fives. Uh, the new 6 through 12 building. We have new staff, new administration in many cases. Uh, I have reshaped the administration. I'm proud of it, of this district. And I've done it for what I think are the best reasons. And I've done it uh, for what I believe will be for the best of our students, which is ultimately why we all exist uh, as an as a administrator or a board. Uh, I work for all seven of you. Uh, regardless of whether we agree or disagree on any issue, I work for all set of you, uh, seven of you. And I try to communicate with all seven of you. I get varying levels of communication back. But I don't make deals. I don't make deals with anybody. I don't sell myself down the river for anybody. And I never would and I never will. That's not the way I was raised. That's not the way I live my life. It's not the way I raise my kids. It's not the way I raise my grandkids. I'm offended by it. And you know what? You can laugh, you can talk, think it's funny. I don't care, okay? I can tell you who I am. I'm the superintendent of this school district, and I'll work as hard as I can for everybody out there, this community, and the seven of you, because you're elected by this community. You represent this community. 
And I think we need to get back to that. We're all here for the same reasons. We don't have to agree with every decision I make or you make or every accusation, whether it's false or not, I don't know. I know when I was part of a conversation, and I wasn't part of that conversation, but I was accused of being part of a conversation. I didn't make deals with anybody. Uh, I had a job to go to if things didn't go the way I wanted them to go, uh, and I chose to stay here, and I thank you for giving me that opportunity. And I'll work the best I can with all seven of you to make things move forward as a district. Uh, and I think that's why we all, why we all exist. And, and I think we need to move on to the, to the next agenda item and get off some of this stuff. Thank you, Mr. Ely. And our next agenda item is item number 15. Mr. Chairman, different yes. subject. Yes, Mr. Rogers. I just wanted, I noticed that we went out of turn on the committees. I just wanted to make a comment on the school building committee. Oh, sure. Just a Go quick, right quick closer. I, I think this is coming to a quick end. Um, first of all, uh, we turned the keys over with our, not this Tuesday's meeting, but last Tuesday's meeting, we turned over the, uh, the keys to the school system to transfer the insurances. We have a partial occupancy. Um, yes, we are under one administrator. Um, whether I like it or not, I understand that. I mean, I, I work for the town when it comes to the building committee, and uh, I'm the representative to the, from the school committee at this time. But um, the building is completed. We're into punch list. Um, I would just like to apologize to the public for, for a couple of things. Uh, when we did tours in the past, this is nothing that the building committee nor the council or town manager did. Um, when, we, when we did the tours and we explained what was gonna be there, a lot of parents are gonna be showing up and say, this is not what you sold us, this is not what we bought, this is not what we wanted. Now, the only thing I want you to know is, and again, um, we're gonna move forward either way, but I'd just like to apologize. I did not intentionally lie to you. This was a 10-year project in the, uh, in the shoe uh, to design two different uh, operations under one roof with centralized services for community use. It's a wonderful facility. There's going to be a lot more said about how it's managed in the upcoming six months. Uh, and I think that uh, we knew it was going to be hectic either way. One administrator or two, you know you're going to get hectic when we start school. It's hectic at the elementary schools. This year is going to be a little extensive, but because of all the moves that we made all at one time, which uh, you can't blame you know, the school committee for that, I mean, uh, the building committee. But the building committee, I have two more Tuesday meetings, two more monthly meetings, then we're disbanding. But right now, I think we have about a 1,000 pieces on the punch list, which is really nothing. Uh, a grease valve, and I know Terry's been at the, the meetings. We're very optimistic, I think, on a, on a real positive note. Casigli uh, and our team that was put together to construct that building to come in on time and under budget is unbelievable. And I think that's probably... Uh, a great job by the manager of the finance department. I know Terry's got thousands of hours up there, uh, and I, Terry, uh, I tip my hat to you on the technology portion. I think sometimes you pulled your hair out for us, but um, job well done for all the players, uh, Kathy Nicole included as the chairman of the council, very supportive, but um, when you get there, you're gonna have to find out there's a new concept, and I think that you're gonna have to acclimate to it. Thank you. Thank you. Any, Mr. Donovan? Thank you. Um, through you to the superintendent, um, before I ask my question, I just want to again point out that this is such an amazing time for our town, and it's positive, and we've been waiting a long time to have such a wonderful thing happen for us, and I think we need to shout it from the rafters that it's complete, and we're on the right road, and we're all in line, and we're ready to go, and I was wondering if there's any type of grand opening celebration plan or something that the town as a whole in conjunction with the school district can celebrate and come to and pat ourselves on the back and say come enjoy this wonderful thing that we've done is any type of grand opening I, celebration I, been planned i know we had talked about it with the building committee uh to do it like the third week of september Mr. It, this is the catch-22 there's been so many changes that we don't have the guy that was in charge of it the two guys it was jovian and bishop that were going to head it up they had plans to bring in a, a marine marching band and a whole type of real build up and tech, uh, all the uh, uh, dignitaries and stuff like that. Well, we're short the two, the two chairmen of that committee, so we have a meeting tomorrow, and uh, I'm going to bring that up to hand off to somebody else that has to handle that, whether it's the administrator at the high school or school committee, whatever has to happen. I think the building committee's got a short run to the finish line, and I think that right now we're missing a couple of, couple of head honchos right now, so I think we'll adjust tomorrow, 5 o'clock, we're meeting on site. The building committee hasn't actually seen the building finished, so I'm going to take them around and show them the building, and then uh, we have uh, 
some duties and businesses, business before, we'll bring it up, Terry, on that. Thank so you. We adjust. Mrs. Donovan? Um, I appreciate that information. Thank you very much. Um, I guess I would just like to point out that I'm not necessarily stating that it has to be a school administrator or somebody up here to plan the celebration. I think this is a very important thing for the entire town as a whole, and we need to include the town side. We have committees or subcommittees of the town council. I know there's an economic development committee. This would be wonderful for them to try to engage the town side to really promote the town and again get us out of that negativity, out of that poor perception, poor people living in Southbridge, and really be proud and be honored and really, really, really show that we deserve this, that we've earned it, that we've worked hard for it, and we should be able to celebrate it in the best way possible. Now, if the date needs to be changed and give us a little bit more time going into October so that we can perhaps get a maritime marching band or have a flyover from some F-15s, whatever it takes, if we have to move the date, move it. I just think this needs to be a really wonderful thing for everybody, and I wish that school side work cohesively with Townside to make this the best celebration that we all deserved. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Donovan. Anyone else for new business before we go on to the last agenda item? Agenda item number 15, executive session. Vote to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining for union and non-union personnel or litigation to the extent that an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the governmental body pursuant to Chapter 30A, Section 21, Part 3. And roll call. Need a motion. I mean, I'm sorry, motion, please. Second. Do you have a second? Second. second. Oh. Thank you, we have a motion and a second. We have a roll call, please. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domingo? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Lazo? Mrs. Yes. Lawson? Yes. Seven, yes? Thank Seven, you, yes. and we'll be returning to open session for adjournment only. <laughs>